Hi, I'm Rose, and today I'm with Fully Raw Christina, vegan food pioneer, author of The Fully Raw Diet. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so delighted to be here. Well, we, so, we're so honored to have you. Thank you. So tell me, Christina, with all these diet trends out there today, why The Fully Raw Diet? You know, I don't really call it a diet because to me it's a lifestyle and it's a way of eating, a way of life. And this way of eating, a fully raw vegan lifestyle, is very much focused on eating fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds all in their natural state. There's no gimmick to losing weight, there's no tricks here or weird recipes there. It really is just nature's food. It's eating the rainbow. So Christina, how did, how did this come about for you? When I was 16, I was diagnosed with hyperglycemia, which is essentially the onset of type 2 diabetes. And a stranger approached me in the grocery store and started telling me how he juices and does smoothies and that he's been eating a raw vegan diet. This was over 11 years ago. Did he know what your issue no, was? No, he just, by mm. the grace of God, just started talking to me. However, I did not look like a healthy 18 year old. I was 87 pounds, I was emaciated, and. I'd just gotten out of the hospital that day from getting um, IVs because I was so sick. Oh, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so he must have just walked up to me and figured, like, you know. Here's a sick girl. Let me just give her let some me, advice. Exactly. <sighs> and, you know, I was, I was so scared of what he was telling me that I didn't really listen, but I took his card because I'm a very open person. And when I went home, I ended up getting sick that night and going back into the hospital. Oh, wow. And when I got out again, I ended up saying to myself, like, I've tried everything the doctors told me to do. I've eaten all the packaged foods, the sugar-free this, sugar-free that. I was tired of being on meds. And it was at that point I just said, you know, I'm just going to try something different. Were doctors telling you to eat packaged foods, sugar-free? Absolutely. Really? Well, because, I mean, I was a diabetic, I, right. so it had to be sugar-free everything. I mean, you're young. It's not like it was so long ago that all, you know, the, the information's been popping up about sugar and how our body breaks well, I've been down doing sugar. this for 11 years now. Oh. And I live in Texas, so imagine Texas 11 years ago. Okay. You know, very, very different. And not only that, but when you're a diabetic or a hyperglycemic, I was hyperglycemic, meaning my blood sugar was high, mm -hmm. not low. And so it was, it was pretty difficult to navigate. For me, that was characterized by things like frequent migraines, chronic uh, fatigue, constipation, blackout, you know, fainting, things like that. And um, on top of all of that, my blood sugar levels were just crazy and I'd lost maybe about 40 pounds in a two year time period. Wow. And I was only like 16 to 18 years old. So, wow. And the stranger just approached me in the grocery store and he started talking to me about it. And that's how I was introduced to this lifestyle, just eating foods in their natural state. And it's, the movement has changed so much since then because there's different types of things. Like there's vegan, there's vegetarian, there's raw vegan. Um, and Regarding to what you asked me earlier, is this kind of like a diet? How does this, you know, differ from other diets? It's not like an Atkins diet where you have to eat different portions. It's not like Weight Watchers where you're counting what you eat. It's not like any of that. It's very much just eating in abundance, eating as many colors as you can, eating foods that are good for you, not limiting your calories, not, you know, restricting yourself, but it's very much just truly a freedom diet. And when you eat nature's foods, you end up healing your body and you feel better and everything else comes into place. So there's nothing cooked that you eat, you don't steam any of the vegetables or you just, it's, everything is raw, so it's chopped up. Chopped up and prepared. And I mean, I haven't eaten cooked mm -hmm. foods in 11 years. Sounds crazy to many people, but it's like I, I don't have any health issues anymore. Completely got rid of my diabetes, feel amazing. and. I mean, yeah, I mean, but you can blend things. You can make juices, gazpachos, smoothies, desserts. You can have raw food and make any food that would have been cooked, you can make it raw. It just takes a little bit of creativity and a little bit of time, but it tastes better. The flavors are more rich and the food is very much the highest nutrient dense food on the planet. How do you find going out to restaurants? Is that challenging or is there always something on the menu that you can have? You know, I like to mix up my life a little bit. Like I've learned to invite more people over so that I can make food for them because I find that that's more personal and I enjoy that much more. And if I ever do need to go out, I mean, I'll order a salad or a fruit plate or I'll eat before. But most of the people that I know now know that if I'm going out with them, I'm going to spend quality time with them because I want to be with them and not 
just revolve our lives around food. So it's actually forced me to find more creative ways to spend time with people and you get to know them better and you really get to bond more. Okay, what about alcohol? I don't drink. Okay. But that's, I mean, there are such yeah, things as raw vegan or alcohol or wine, but it's a personal preference of mine that I very much just like to feel very grounded right. and connected in my body. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's your health and it's, you know, if it makes you feel good, that's what's important. Um, you now also coach people in the raw lifestyle. Um, what's the single greatest inspiration you hear from your clients about this new way of eating? Oh my gosh. Every day, like I, I cried three times yesterday. I was at um, one of my book launch parties and I had, just giving you a few examples, I had one person walk up to me and say he lost 250 pounds from wow. doing this and that he used to not be able to walk and now he runs Ironmans. That's one. Um, I had another girl who's 15 years old who battled anorexia and said that eating this way helped her to come to love her body wow. and come into a way of eating mm -hmm. foods that loved her back, you know? And so it's like two different completely people, two different completely age ranges, two different stories, but showing you that food can really help anything, you know, because it really is the way that we look at ourselves and we digest and we process all of these things. It can begin with food. So what do you want people to take away from the book? Yes, I want people to eat healthier, but I want them to realize that it's far more than just the food that makes this change. It's very much a connection with yourself and with the planet and making this world a better place. And that when you really do work on yourself and you improve yourself and you feel good, everything and everybody around you feels better as well. Because mm -hmm. you've changed yourself, therefore everything around you also shifts. But, you know, it's, it's kind of fun, even though the, food, the book is about food and recipes and feeling better and a way to live healthier, you, the, the benefits are so much deeper than that. And you don't realize that until after you start getting into it a little bit more. But that's kind of cool. Very, very <laughs> cool. You know, so when people think of raw and organic, they also think of expensive. Yes. So how can, you know, how do you coach them on you know what to buy what's affordable where where they can find certain foods maybe that are more cost effective you know there are so many different ways that I tell people that they can get great deals on bulk organic produce I'm in Texas right now and I run an organic produce co-op I basically run our largest farmers market in Texas and I always tell people buy local buy organic, find your farmer's markets, go and buy by the case, get the case discounts, start filling up your home with produce, and don't necessarily focus on buying like all the dehydrated snacks or the packaged goods, but just focus on buying like the produce because that's what's less expensive. And when you stop spending money on other things, you end up saving more just by you know, buying more produce. Not only that, but you, send, you save money on medical bills when you start feeling mm. better. Mm. Save money on electricity because you're not cooking. You save money on so many different things you don't realize. So while it may be a trade-off, in the long run, you're so worth it. So what about, I did want to ask you, what about dehydrated foods? Are those I like them, but acceptable? I don't. Yeah, they're great. They're great to travel with, but I don't necessarily eat them as like a main meal all the time because I prefer juicy fruits or greens or things that are more nutritious and hydrating for your body. Okay. Hydration. That's another. Hydration. You know, I, I, I believe now we're also becoming aware that our bodies aren't hydrated enough and water's just not cutting it. So what are the other, you know, other foods that we can introduce to help hydrate our body? Oh my gosh. Honestly, greens are amazing. Greens are just filled like with lettuce greens, lettuce, kale. kale. But then, like, think about you have very many different levels of high water content fruits from like watermelon, which is one of the highest, right? Then you have like honeydew, cantaloupe, oranges, apples, pears. All of those are very high in water content. And then you have some fruits that are lower, like dates, bananas, right? They're a little bit more chewy, mm -hmm. a little bit more gooey. Um, a little more so, sugary. A little bit more sugary, yes. But even dates, even as dense as they are, still have a water content value in them. So, so eat more of those. But what about watermelon? I mean, we just kind of like pass that right through. Are, is our body absorbing enough before? Absolutely. But you see, you'll never know that. You have to trust your body to do that work. Mm -hmm. your, your job is to give your body as many nutrients as it can so that it can do its job, right? 
And you have to trust that these foods are self-healing and that your body will do what it needs with these foods. So the more nutrients that you consume, the better your body can heal. Just tell us a little bit about the jewelry that you're wearing. My jewelry is made by my half-sister Lorena and she hand makes all of it and she's very much a person. She reads uh, my energy and she makes it based upon what she thinks I would look like if I were made of jewelry. They're made of pure brass and she actually makes it herself. Um, these are energetic gemstones, they're all real. Um, well, this isn't. The color, I mean, there's just so many colors. It's so yeah, vibrant. Yeah, this isn't real leather. Nothing I make, nothing I wear has animal products in it. It's just vegan. And it took her maybe about four weeks to make that, and about three weeks to make this. Um, I just think it's so vibrant. That's why I had to mention it. Uh, <laughs> so you, Texas is a state of carnivores. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how did you get this movement going in Texas? I mean, are, there obviously are more people there eating vegan. You How know, did you conquer that? <laughs> well, it's been an 11 year journey. I mean, you can imagine when I went raw vegan in Texas 11 years ago, vegetarian was just starting to become talked about. You know, people be like, oh, I know that thing, that thing where they don't eat cows, right? <laughs> <laughs> then telling yeah. somebody in Texas that you went vegan, oh, she done gone off the deep end. I don't <laughs> even know. Telling somebody that That's you're good. going raw vegan. Um, you know, my business story is one of, I was inspired to create a lifestyle for this because of the way that I lived. And I grew up as a potter. I wanted to be an artist, kind of like the rest of my family. And um, when I went to Rice University, I was in a grant for ceramics, but I ended up getting elected to be on the environmental committee of the college. And we started a farmer's market there every Tuesday. And there were only four farmers who came, but I ended up becoming very close with them. And through a combination of this and getting to know people in my community, I ended up starting a co-op in my garage with seven people. And this co-op grew from seven people to 52,000 people wow. in just the Houston area over the course of the years. And it's been amazing because as I was trying to find food for my family, I realized that there was a dire need for people to have organic produce in Texas because it wasn't available. Mm -hmm. And so me getting into this entire system and starting this co-op ended up being very much a needed necessity <laughs> for people. And um, so because of that and getting involved in the community, that's how I was able to start the word. and. Eventually, I started a YouTube channel and then wrote my book, and so that's how it got started in Texas. But, that's you know, great. Houston and Austin are very much, they're really cool people. Like, they want to do good, and I think that it's, it's hard because L.A. and New York are very progressive, but Texas is very down home and very based in, like, traditional things. And so sometimes it just takes a few people to kind of be like, hey, let's do this together, and it works. So. What, what, what does high frequency food even mean? I love that phrase because high frequency food basically means that this food vibrates at a higher energy level than other foods. Let me give you an example. Please. <laughs> the, the reason why raw foods is more beneficial for you than eating cooked foods or just steamed veggies is because when you cook a food, you denature its protein. You essentially kill a little bit of the energy to make it more palatable for you. Mm -hmm. um, an example would be a fresh green bean versus a cooked green bean. When you look okay. at the fresh green bean, what do you see? You see a brighter color. bright green, it's crispy, crunchy, sweet, you know, plump, juicy. It's just, it looks like it has life in it. Then you see a cooked green bean. What do you see? Dark green, almost brown, slimy, needs salt to eat it, leaching water, floppy. And then you start to think, if you are what you eat, and if the words those words that describe those foods emanate how you're going to feel and the kind of person that you'd be, wouldn't you much rather want to be a sweet and juicy green bean rather than, you know, a slimy... <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be you know, looking at string beans a whole different maybe. way from now on. <laughs> but that's how, that's how it kind of works. When you look at rainbow foods, when they're raw, they're much more bright and vibrant and colorful. Sure. And they provide much more energy for your body, which means that they're, they vibrate at a higher frequency when the chemical, chains of cooking, chemical change of cooking the food happens, the energy of that food changes as well and the frequency lowers. And so the reason why raw foods are much more healing is because they vibrate at a higher frequency 
of, you know, for your body, mm -hmm. and they're more nutrient dense. Makes sense. Yes. I hope Changed that. my outlook on string beans, that's for sure. <laughs> So we have this beautiful fruit and fruit juice. Tell us what we're going to make today. We're going to be making a fully raw smoothie, and this one I call the mint berry julep smoothie. Yum. It is so delicious, so sweet. Literally takes you just a few simple ingredients and about five minutes to make, if okay. not less. So what do we have here? We have some lemons. We have... We have frozen raspberries, frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries some fresh mint, some freshly squeezed apple juice, and we're just gonna use a squeeze or more of lemons. Okay. So, so the first thing that first? I want you to do is go ahead and add in all those blueberries into oh, this. All of them. Yep, all of them. Blueberries are really great. And it's easy to use frozen fruit in smoothies at any given time. And this is organic, and it's really important to eat organic berries because they're one of the most highly sprayed of pesticides. Oh, so to know. make sure to get organic frozen berries. Um, raspberries, raspberries, go ahead and add in about half of that, which is one cup. If you want to add the whole thing in there, you, you can do that too. It's what, a matter of preference? It's a matter point? of how hungry you are. Okay. <laughs> you can never have too we'll many berries. Half of that. Perfect. Okay. And then go ahead and add in about half of that amount the of strawberries. strawberries. About one cup as okay. well. About one cup of strawberries, which is about half of this bowl. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and add in all the mint. Just Throw, just it, throw all it all in. Like, throw just it all no in. No need to break apart the leaves or anything. Okay. I mean, if you want to take just off those two big stems, you can. The ones that are just sticking out. The more powerful the blender you have, the more it will pulverize that. Okay. And then just grab one of those halves of the lemons and just squeeze it on in. Okay. That's right. That mint smells great. Yes. I love fresh mint. I love that mint good? as well. That's perfect. Okay. And then, um, as far as that apple juice, I would pour about half of that in there. All right, this is about, um, i say about three cups in here. Yes, so, so maybe this... pour about two cups in. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right, now, now we're ready, ready to blend. Let's go. And, and you can always adjust and tight. add, you can always add more berries in here if you want it to be thicker. If you want it to be smoother, you just add in more apple juice. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Turn it on. Okay, I think it's ready. That's it? So is that what we do when we find that it's giving us a little problem and getting stuck? We'll just add some more liquid? That's, that's exactly it. Okay. And it looks so good. It does, and I'm sure it tastes really good. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, here's some for you. Oh, thank you so Oops. much. Made a mess. Smoothies tend to make a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. It's much easier than other things. Cheers. Smells good. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that's good. Isn't that yummy? It's really good. <laughs> Yum. Cheers. Fully raw, Christina. Where can we find you? You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Fully Raw Christina or my website, fullyraw.com, and I'm on Instagram at Fully Raw Christina or Snapchat at Fully Raw, but I mean, I'm all on social media. Just type in Fully Raw, you'll find me. Okay, <laughs> author of Fully Raw Diet, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>